As a new heritage maker, one of the first things you'll want to do is to upload your photos to your online studio account. It's really simple, and once your photos are safely stored online, they will always be ready for future projects. To start, log into your Heritage Makers account and start a new project. Or click the My Project and Templates button and open a project you have already created. Choose Edit and wait for the file to load into Studio. This may take a minute or two. Along the bottom of the screen you can see a series of tabs. All of these are part of the Content Explorer and give you access to photos, artwork, quotes, and components of past projects. But right now we're interested in the tab labeled My Photos. Click on it to raise the window. This left side will show your uploaded files, organized into folders that contain individual albums. So let's say we want to add a new batch of family vacation photos. We'll choose the New Folder button and give it the name Family Vacations. When we have the name typed in, we'll click on Create Folder. Then, to keep these images even more organized, we'll create a special album called Disneyland 2010. Okay, now we are ready to start uploading photos. Make sure you have the correct folder or album selected and click Add More Photos. In the pop-up window that appears, find the photos you want to upload. Select the images you want to upload. You can select multiple photos by holding down the control or shift keys while you select them. On a Mac, you press the shift key and the Apple button as you select. When you are ready to upload, choose Open or Select and the process will begin. This status window will show the progress of the upload. Depending on the number and size of the photos and your internet connection speed, the upload may take several minutes. Here's an important tip. Before you select photos to upload, make sure you have them oriented correctly in the Finder window of your computer. That way they will be uploaded correctly and you won't have to fix them in Studio. When you want to add more photos, just create a new folder or album or use an existing one and follow the same process. Once uploaded to your Studio account, you can rest assured that your valuable images are protected from fire, flood, or computer failure. Now here are some additional things you should know about uploading photos. First, all photos should be in the JPEG format, which is the standard file type used by all popular digital cameras and scanners. If you have a Premiere membership, you can also upload PNG images. The photos should not be larger than 10 megabytes in size, or 4800 pixels in width or height. This is not usually a problem since most consumer cameras produce images well under this limit. But if you are scanning a large scrapbook page, for example, you might have to reduce the file size of the image in Photoshop, Elements, Painter, or some other photo manipulation program. So your photos shouldn't be too large, but there could also be a problem if your images are too small. You might want to upload photos from the internet, like a picture from a Facebook page, for example. This is usually not a good idea since most websites compress images to save on space and your image will end up pixelated on the printed page. Your best bet is to use photos from digital cameras that have been set to record images at the higher file size settings. If you have specific questions about any of these issues, your Heritage Makers consultant will be happy to help. In this tutorial, we won't go into the details of working with photos in the Studio program, but let's at least demonstrate how to drag and drop them into a project layout. It's so simple. On a blank page, just choose any photo, click and hold down the button on the mouse as you drag it onto the page. Let go and the image appears. Once on the page, you can move it to a new position by clicking and dragging. You can change the size by clicking and holding down on these handles and moving it to the new position. This handle lets you rotate the photo. This toolbox over here provides all sorts of other options that we will cover in other tutorials. If you want to place an image into a template, the first step is to make sure you click on the placeholder to make sure it is active. To drag and drop, the placeholder must be locked in the toolbox. This is the locked position, which is the default for any new template you open. Clicking on the icon toggles it back and forth between locked and unlocked. Now, to insert the photo, click on the image and hold down the mouse button as you drag it into the red box at the center of the placeholder. A common mistake is to let go of the mouse button 
with the cursor positioned outside the red box, but still within the borders of the photo placeholder. If you do this, the image will simply end up as a new image on the page, and it will not be in the position you intended. You can avoid this by pressing the control button, which is the command or apple button on a Mac, while you drag the photo into the placeholder. Then the cursor can be anywhere inside the placeholder when you let go of the mouse button and the photo will snap into the correct position. If you're not happy with how the photo looks within the layout, choose another. That's the beauty of digital publishing. You can try multiple options until you are totally satisfied. By the way, did you notice how a green check mark appears on some of the files in your album? This helpful feature lets you know which photos you've already used in your project, so you don't duplicate them on another page. Hopefully this tutorial makes you comfortable with uploading and placing photos. Look for other tutorials on the great tools available for manipulating your photos in Studio. Mm -hmm.